Hello everyone! Today we want to talk about Firebase Messaging and how to integrate it into our Flutter application. With Firebase Messaging it is possible to do push notifications on our Android and iOS devices. And we want to start first of all with that we go to pub.link.org and then type in Firebase Messaging. And from here we go to the installing section and copy this Firebase dependencies. And then we go to the root folder of our Flutter project and go to the pubspec.jml file. And here we have this dependencies and we put this here under our dependencies. The next thing what we want to do is we want to go to the readme section. And here we have different things what we have to do for Android integration and also for the iOS integration. And we will first of all start with the Android integration. All right, it says that we should get here the Google services JSON from Firebase. So I will just go here and open it in a new tab. And here on this Firebase console, we can add a new project. Otherwise, if you have one, you can also take this project. And I will call it simply Firebase Messaging. And I accept all the terms and create this project. The next thing what we do is we select this Firebase messaging and then we go to the grow section and here we select the cloud messaging. And now we click here on this Android symbol. The first thing what we need to do is to add here a name. So we go to our project and then to Android app source main Android manifest and here we copy this package name and copy it here into it and then register app. And now we get this download Google services JSON, which we have to download and we have to put it into our app. So we have to put it in our Android folder. And I will copy this file here. And we have to put it here under Android and then to our app folder. So I will paste it here inside. After we have copied the Google services JSON, we have to go to the next step. And in this step, we have to do some configuration. So the first thing is we have to go to the project and then to the build gradle. Here is our Android project. And then we go to the build gradle directly under this folder. And we have then to put it here under build script and dependencies this class pass. I will just copy it. Then we see here we have your build script dependencies and we will put it here directly to it. And what I will do here is I will modify the version. So I will put here 2.0. And the next thing what we have to do is we have to go to the app level. So we have to go to Android app and then we have there also build gradle. So let's go there. So here app build gradle and here inside we have to put something we have to put this here, this apply plugin. And another step we have to do for the Android integration is to copy this here and put it into our Android manifest. So we go to our project again, then to Android app source main and here Android manifest. And we will put it here into the activity main activity and then under intent filter and I will just copy it here into it. And if you have an iOS device then you have to follow these five steps here where you have first of all have to generate a certificate and there you have to do some steps in the Apple developer center which I don't have so I cannot show you. However I think if you just follow these steps it should work. Now we have to integrate Firebase messaging and therefore we create here in our scaffold under the body property this messaging widget and here we have a stateless widget for now and we will convert it to a stateful widget. First of all we want to create here in our state firebase messaging which is provided by the plugin and we also have to copy the import statements so we go here to the top to the installing section and here we have the importment statement which we have to copy and we put it into our project here. And now the issue is gone. And the next thing what we want to do is to initialize our state. So we will configure our Firebase messaging here. 
And inside we have here this on message, on launch and on resume properties, which we will use later to get our messages from the Firebase console. And for iOS, we also need to request some notification permissions. Therefore, we add this line here also. I also created here in our model directory a message object where we have a title and a body. And that's later the message which we get from the Firebase console. And we want to create here with this object message, which I import here, a new list where we later will put all of our messages inside, which we get from the Firebase console. And we also want to display these messages. And to display everything, we will create here list view and we will go over all the messages and then we want to build the message. And here we create this method build message and we create a normal list style and have a title and a subtitle. And now we want to add here something in the on message function. First of all, we get the notification from the Firebase console, which is triggered. And this notification then will be added to our messages list, which then will be displayed in our app. Let's just test it right now because the application is complete. And then we also restart our application here. And the next thing what we want to do is we want to go to the Firebase console to the cloud messaging tab under grow. And here we click on send your first message. And now we have your different options what we can fill. So I will fill it here test title, for example, then notification text, notification. And then we click on next. And here we need to select which app we target. And in our case, we have only one registered. So I will take my one app where I want to set the push notification to. Then you can schedule when this should be. So you can schedule a date or something or daily or whatever you want to do. I will take now. And here are some events which you can do, but I will go like this out. And now, which is really important, you have to go to this Firebase messaging page. Here it says on the bottom that you have to put like a click action as a key value pair. So here it has to be click action. The other thing has to be this flood notification click this value. And this is really important because we have put in our Android manifest. If you remember, we have put there this intent filter with this flutter notification click. And this has to be the same. So we have to be careful that the names are the same here. And yeah, then you can say when this message should be expired, you can set the priority. And if the sound should be disabled or enabled, if there is a push notification on the customer's device. All right, and then I save as a draft, I will duplicate it multiple times so that we can use it multiple times. All right, I think three times is enough. And now I can click on here and go on edit. And now I can review. And now I could publish this message I will do. So I will go to our app. Before I send the message, I also want to clear the console. So you see what is changing here. I will publish it. And you see that our Android device got notified with this test title and the notification body. What is happening? We don't get a push notification because our app is currently active. We can do the same. We go here away out of this app and then we send the message again. But first of all, I want to show you what we got here. We got here for the first one on message, which is like, okay, this message is got when you are having your app open. Then we got this on message. So he went into this function here and then he executed this messages at and then it was displayed in our application. All right, let's do the same behavior. We sent also push notification and this time the app is not open in the foreground. So I will take a next notification again. I click here and I click on edit. I will also send it to the devices. And now you see here we have a flutter icon and we also got a sound. I don't know if it's like really intended. And here you see we have got this test title and this notification. And if you go to the console, you don't see currently anything. So I will clear it again. And if we click on it, then you see we are going to this function on resume. So we will end up here. The on resume function is therefore executed if we get this push notification in our system tray. And if we tap on it, then we 
are resumed in our application and we get here this notification. And the last thing is we can also close our application. All right, the application is closed. And now what I will do, I will clear all and I will send the next message. So I will send here the next and publish it. Right now I got the notification again, even if our app is not open. And this time I will tap here again and normally it would then execute this here. How can I prove it that this is executed? Because currently our app is not connected here to this IntelliJ. So what we can do is we can add a message. So I will prove it quickly to you. And I put it here in front of our messages and on launch so that we can verify that this function here on launch is executed. And I will do the same. So I will close it. Now the app is closed. And the important thing is that we also have to put our application again on our device. So I will restart our application and install it again here on our device. And I have added here also a second thing where we add the text with the notification message which we got from our server. And while the app is starting, I will go here and click on one message which we haven't sent yet, then on edit and I will review it and then publish it. And if we do the same procedure again, and I modified here, for example, that this message which we get is printed to our console or to our screen, and I restarted the application, sent the message new and so on. And you see that the notification itself, where we get the title from, is empty. So we don't get here a notification and title and body. And now what we can do here is we can add to our data structure some key value pair like we did here before with click action and flutter notification click. And so I access here the data and then from the data property, we will access title and body. And I also added then to our message when we composed our notification, this title, and then I put a test title and a body and a test body. So we get this messages also. Right now I'm restarting this application and installed it again on this device so that we have this new version where we access the data and not directly the notification like before. Now the app is restarted and I will close it again. All right, the app is closed. And now we want to send the push notification again. So I will publish it. Here we get then notified on our device again, even if the app is closed. I will click on this and now the app launches again. And like you can see in our data property, the body with test body and the title with test title is set and we access here the data property. Therefore we get here this test title and test body as a text in our application and not a null value anymore. To quickly recap what we have learned, we have this on message function, which is executed every time our app is in the foreground. And then if the message is sent via the console and the app is opened, we go into this function here and execute this. Another function is the on launch function, which is executed if our app is closed. And if the user taps then in the system tray, then he will tap on our message and then the app will launch. And then this thing is executed. And the last thing is the on resume. This is when the app is opened. However, it is not in the foreground. The user gets also a notification in the system tray. And if we tap on it, on this notification, we will end up on the on resume because our app was opened and therefore it will resume the app. So it will print a message here. And with these three functions, you can literally control what is happening in your application. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter.